Hi, I'm Ari Lynette. Before I start this video, I want to put in a really, really big disclaimer. Because I know some people are going to see the title of this video and the thumbnail of this video and want to think a certain thing or comment a certain thing. And before you do, before any of that, I want to give a disclaimer. This is a video about why I will not be buying Lady Gaga's makeup line, House Laboratories. However, I am a huge Lady Gaga fan, and I don't say that lightly, I mean like, I live and breathe Gaga. When I was little, I literally wanted to be her. One of my biggest inspirations then and today, and I will defend the art pop era till it's dying day. Do not underestimate the passion I have for the career and music of Lady Gaga. And I feel like that's the reason why I've had such high expectations for this makeup line she's creating, that it's meant that it's fallen in my estimation. So I don't want this to come across as hateful because it isn't. I really love Lady Gaga and I would have loved to get something from this makeup line, but I just know I'm not going to. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I was feeling about the line at first, how that developed, some of my thoughts about different aspects of the products, like the packaging and the way it's being sold, and just a lot of reasons why I don't think I'll be buying anything from this collection. At least not this first wave. Please do not attack me in the comments because I really want to be as objective as possible with these products, but also with the way that they're being sold and the visual appearance. Even though I do love Lady Gaga and I would love to get something from this line, I have to try and separate that because I don't want to just buy something because it's a Lady Gaga product. So that's the disclaimer over with, let's get on to the first part of this video, which is the background. So before I talk about the reasons that I don't want to buy from this line, I want to start with the kind of background of this line, of me as a fan, and just my expectations for this line. When I first heard rumours about Lady Gaga bringing out a makeup line, I was ready to drop everything on it. Like, I just thought of that as such an amazing opportunity to present that inventive, artistic side of Lady Gaga that's kind of been a little bit pushed to the wayside recently with the Joanne album and the Jazz era, and really get into something a little bit more adventurous, kind of like her older days. I actually thought that this was going to turn out a little bit more adventurous and wacky and wild because of how the Enigma residency that she's been doing has been. It's just been this colourful, manic, sensational show. And when I saw that and the whole aesthetic of that, I was like, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be the best launch of the year. Nothing is going to top it. I just had that feeling. And turns out I was wrong. I didn't get that immediately from this launch. When I saw the promo trailer, I was pretty much in the same feeling of, oh my god, this is amazing. I love the visuals. I love the music, by the way, if that is from the new album. I'd be happy to see that on there. But the whole aesthetic and the mantra of the whole line. Even the narration when she was like, they say the world doesn't need a new beauty line. Too bad. I was like, Bravo. Because a lot of people complain about celebrities getting beauty lines, especially influencers. Like, oh, everyone has a beauty line and it's pointless. And it's like, well, it's not really particularly pointless. The people who like it will get it. The people who don't can just ignore it. And I think that Gaga showed some awareness of this, that yeah, there are a lot of makeup lines out there. And it seemed to me like she would really make this line unique, have its own message, feel really authentic to her, but also to her fans. Now, with the reveal of the products, I don't find anything particularly offensive. However, I am going to talk about what I think of these individual products and why I won't be buying them. So let's break down the products. So the three products that she's releasing are a lip liner, a lip gloss, and an all-over glitter paint. That's probably the best way I can describe it, is an all-over glitter paint in the style of maybe like the Essence Metal Shocks, or the Steeler Shimmering Glows, that kind of style product. And I'm going to explain why I think that's a good idea for a product a little bit later on, but we'll start with the first two things, the lip liners and the lip glosses. First of all, this is very personal to me, but I never really use lip liners or lip glosses. Lip liners I pretty much never use because I just put my glasses on and bet that I'll get a good application with the lipstick I have. I just don't really use lip liners and I don't really plan to. Like with this lipstick today, the Colourpop Ultra Matte and Bumble, I just applied it with the applicator and it just went on fine. And I know that not everyone is comfortable with doing that and some people will prefer a lip liner and that's great. 
if you want to, but I just don't use them, so it would be no point of me buying it. And then the lip glosses. I don't really wear lip glosses very much either. I really gravitate towards wearing a matte lipstick, or at least a satin lipstick. If I want to do a gloss over it, I might. Like, I might take a gloss and put it over a matte lipstick. But I don't just wear gloss on its own unless I'm really aiming for a very, very specific aesthetic. Like with one of my Dawn of the Dance tutorials, I used a gloss on its own, but that made sense because it was a Laguna Blue theme tutorial. Like, I don't wear gloss on its own all the time because I don't particularly think I look that good in it. I like a more simple matte lip colour. That's just me, and I know the, the tide is turning against matte lips, and I understand why she went with a gloss, but I just don't really wear glosses. <laughs> so, again, there's no point in me getting it. Also, with the lip liners and the lip glosses, we really need to talk about the colours. They're just kind of there. They aren't really anything special. I was expecting something a little bit more exciting, a little bit more and adventurous, especially with the Enigma show. I was expecting something just a little bit more interesting, and it's just kind of the same thing you can get anywhere, which is quite disappointing for me. The last product I want to talk about is the All Over Glitter Paint, or I'm not sure what the technical term is for it, or what the official product name is, but it's essentially a liquid glitter pigment that you can use on the eyes, on the face, on the lips. Conceptually, that is a winner. I think that's an excellent concept. I really like the concept of anything multi-use. Like, if I had it my way, there'd be like multi-use pencil, multi-use matte paints, multi-use glitter paint. Just lots of different things like that. I think it's something that people aren't really trying out in the makeup industry, and I think has a lot of potential. But I like that Gaga went with the all-over glitter paint, but again, the shades are just kind of fine. Also, let's be honest, I never use any kind of glitter eyeshadow that comes out of a tube, and I never use any glitter lip paints either. I have one liquid eyeshadow, which is the Essence Metal Shock. It was quite affordable, so I didn't really need to worry about spending so much on something I never use. But I just never use it, because I don't really use liquid eyeshadows, and I wouldn't use it on my lips either. I only have select occasions where I wear glitter lips. For example, the Lime Crime Serpentina lipstick I really love, and that's kind of it. If it ain't Serpentina, usually I'm not wearing it. So as much as I like the concept of the all-over glitter paint, I just know I'm not going to use it, because I don't use those types of things. I just never do. If I want a metallic eyeshadow, I go for a pressed powder metallic eyeshadow. If I want a lipstick, I usually go for a matte lipstick. And I almost never do any kind of lip lining. So there is no point in me buying any of these products, because I just won't use them. They'll just sit in my drawer and do nothing. And I don't want that to happen to products that should be really good and really exciting. And I don't want to waste my money, but also waste product. Waste shipping costs, waste all of that, just to get some products just because they have Lady Gaga's name on them. If I want to appreciate Lady Gaga, I don't need to buy a makeup line to do that. I can play one of her albums, I can put on that art pop sweater that I got from China, even though it barely fits me. But still, I'll do that instead of buying a makeup line, products that I don't use, and colours that just aren't that interesting to me. I think that's a good sign of me being able to control my spending, because it means that I'm not just dropping things on things because it's got someone's name on it, I think that's a good sign for the future. There is another reason why these products in particular don't appeal to me, and that is the packaging. When I heard that Lady Gaga was making a makeup line, I was thinking, oh, the products are going to be really interesting, but I was also thinking, oh, the packaging is going to be excellent. Especially with the amount of aesthetics that Lady Gaga has dabbled in in her time in the music industry. She's done more gothic themes, she's done things with religious influences, with mythological influences, pop art, obviously. Hell, even doing jazz standards with Tony Bennett has an aesthetic. Like, she's done a lot of really exciting things. And again, if you compare it to how vibrant and eclectic the Enigma show is, you'd be expecting something really exciting. So imagine my surprise when I looked at the products and I saw the most generic packaging possible. <coughs> like the tube with the black gradient. Like, lots of different people have done that before, and they've done it better. Black Moon Cosmetics is a shining example for me of a company that's done that black to clear gradient and done it gorgeously. I believe even Huda Beauty's done something like that. You could even extend that to the Bad Habit lipsticks that they used to have, R.I.P. Bad Habit. And then the last comparison... <coughs> 
dare I say. The last comparison, these look like Cookie and Cosmetics. <laughs> I know, it makes me sick to even say that, but it just, it screams generic. It screams generic, private label. I'm not gonna go as far and say AliExpress because I don't think that it's as bad as that, but I just think that it's not to the standard of what I've come to expect from Lady Gaga. It's what I'd call a brand withdrawal when a brand company entity, public figure, creates something that is out of character in terms of quality, in terms of aesthetic, in terms of everything they represent. That's a brand withdrawal and that's what this brand feels like. Calling it House Laboratories doesn't make it feel any more luxury or inventive or creative. Because with a name like that, you'd expect something more exciting. For example, the first time Lady Gaga did a perfume, she did the arguably iconic black fluid Lady Gaga fame, where it had the gorgeous ball shape and it had the gold cap. You could get it in plastic or you could get it in metal, the masterpiece. And I just remember the campaign for that, the imagery for that, the aesthetic for that. On point every note. It was exceptional. And I just think that this is nowhere near as good as that. I know Lady Gaga for really exciting original concepts, or at least stuff Madonna did, which was itself original unique concepts, but this just comes across as like a Huda Beauty holiday collection. I really think that Gaga can do better than this line. And then my last thought is something that's been talked about a lot on more of a social justice standpoint, but I want to briefly address the way that House Laboratories is being sold. It's being sold on their own website, and it's also being sold exclusively through Amazon. And even if you order from the official website, it's still going to be fulfilled by Amazon. And there are a lot of reasons why people don't want to support Amazon nowadays, because of their incredibly questionable labour ethics. They've been criticised for not paying the employees enough, overworking, having a seriously poor effect on jobs. There are a lot of reasons why people don't want to support Amazon, don't want to participate in Prime Day, which is, as I'm filming it's happening right now, but uh, when it is uploaded it will be later, so it will have gone by then. But I believe there's a strike going on with Amazon workers around this time of Pride Day. Not Pride Day. That was my last one. Prime Day. And I'm actually going to stand with them and I'm not going to be buying anything from Amazon over the next few days. I haven't really bought anything from them in a while and I have to say, I feel quite good about that. I could go on about the ethical side of house laboratories selling on Amazon, but let's talk about just the whole idea of that and how that's a little bit weird. Amazon is not the place I would be going for makeup. Regardless of the politics, regardless of the ethics, makeup from Amazon, I don't see it for me. There are some companies that sell makeup on Amazon, but it's always drugstore brands like Maybelline, Rimmel, L'Oreal, those types of brands. And I don't see House Laboratories going for that market. This is something more high-end, more upscale, as far as I can tell. So it just feels very out of character to put a brand like this on Amazon of all places. And then the other makeup you get on Amazon are private label Chinese makeup, which isn't necessarily bad. And there are lots of good brands where it's more private label Chinese style. Like I noticed you can get Delancey on Amazon, which I've actually been interested in trying one of their palettes. Beauty Glazed is on there. Like, a lot of those types of brands are on there. But then the other type of makeup is reselling, scalping, as we'd call it in the doll community, getting something from another place and selling it on Amazon for, like, twice the price. All of this isn't even taking into account the possibility of fakes. And also, if you think about how well Fenty Beauty is doing, because Rihanna sold that at Sephora, Harvey Nichols, Boots, the fact that it's been doing so well in Boots recently is just a testament to how good of a decision that was. I think Lady Gaga could have benefited from selling it in more of like a department store setting, or somewhere like Sephora, or even Ulta, or Debenhams, or something like that. But I just don't buy makeup from Amazon, because they just don't. The only place is less reliable for makeup than Amazon is eBay, or AliExpress, or Santi Ali. Like, can you imagine Lady Gaga putting up a makeup stall in Santi Ali and selling house laboratories? Like, that's just incredibly out of character. And that's the kind of thing I get from her selling it on Amazon. On one hand, I don't want to buy the line from Amazon because I don't really want to continue to support a lot of Amazon's dangerous practices. But also, I don't really want to buy it from Amazon because why the hell would I buy makeup from Amazon? Other than, like, a couple of CoverGirl products that you can't get in the UK. Like, 
That isn't a thing that people do. And for good reason. We stick to trusted sellers. Also, quickly note something. If, for example, someone was selling an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette on Amazon, if they were selling a sultry palette, and then at the top it said from Anastasia Beverly Hills, as if it was like a link to a shop, that doesn't mean it's official. Even if it's like the most amazingly punctuated thing, even if it's the like, presented in the best way possible, there isn't really a guarantee. One, that it's from ABH themselves, two, from an approved stockist, or three, authentic and not gonna turn your eyes into an absolute mess. Stick to approved sellers. So what I want you to get out of this video is that me as a really big Lady Gaga fan, even if Stan you might call, I was so excited for this line and I really wanted to get in on the action and get something from it. But upon seeing the products and the packaging and the way it was being sold, I just decided that it wasn't for me. And I'm really proud of myself for not just jumping on it because it's a celebrity collaboration from someone I really like. And I think that that's a lesson people could take from this video is that if your fave releases a product, consider if you actually want that product. Don't just get it because it's them. Get it because you like it. And consider all of the things around it. And don't just jump at something because it's got Lady Gaga or Rihanna or Madonna or someone like that on it. Jump on it because you like it. For example, I got this Coca-Cola orange vanilla flavour and I really like this. But if I didn't like it, I wouldn't keep buying it because it was the Coca-Cola orange vanilla. I'd be buying it because I liked the taste of it and I enjoyed it. And if I was to just buy something from the label and not use it, that would be pointless. Sometimes appreciating your faves can just be streaming up pop on Spotify, Apple Music, any available streaming service, getting the album getting the vinyl, buying it on iTunes, going to HMB, getting a CD. You know, just some suggestions. So that's all for today's video. I've been Ari Lunette, you've been amazing, and I can't think of an end line, so just enjoy my waving for the next couple of seconds. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and come say hi in the comments. You can find me on Twitter at Ari Lunette Work and on Instagram at Ari Lunette. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Love you for watching.